Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will set up our RecyclerView adapter for all of our fragments. So we will use the, the exact same adapter for each fragment to be able to display our news later on. So let's create a new package in our root package and call it adapters. We will only have a single adapter, but I think you should always keep a good package structure. Even if you have a single adapter, then you shouldn't leave it in the root package. I rather put it in a separate adapter package. So let's create a new Kotlin class in this and I will call this news adapter. This news adapter class will inherit from recyclerview.adapter. Recyclerview needs to be imported. And here we will pass our news adapter dot article view holder, which we haven't created yet. So let's do that inside of our news adapter class. We create an inner class article view holder that takes an item view as a parameter, which is a view. And that is a recycler view dot view holder. And here we need to pass our item view. And what you should always do is to implement your recycler view adapters with diff util. So normally if you had a a uh, recycler view adapter and you pass like a list of articles here like list which is a list of articles and every time you want to add an article then you add it to the list and you call um, adapter dot notify dataset changed but that is very inefficient and we won't do this in this part because by using notify dataset changed we the recycler view adapter will always update its whole items even the items that didn't change and to solve that problem, we can use what is called diffutil. And as the name says, diffutil calculates the differences between two lists and enables us to only update those items that were different. And another advantage of that is that it will actually happen in the background so we don't block our main thread with that. And to start with that, we need to create a callback for our async list differ. So the async list differ will be the tool that compares our two lists and then only updates those items that were changed. And as you can hear, async list differ is asynchronous, so it will execute that on a background thread. Let's create a callback for that, private val differ callback. And that will be an anonymous class of diff util dot we need to import diffutil here dot item callback. And now we need to pass the type of the items in our list. And all items will have the type article. Then we need to call the constructor on that. And inside here we can press control plus I and implement those two functions that are needed for that callback. First of all, we have that function are items the same that should return, as the name says, if our two articles that are passed to this function are actually the same. And normally you would just return the old item.id and check if that is equal to our new item.id because we know that the ID of each article is unique and if two articles have the same ID, then they must be the same item. But in this case, it's a little bit different, be different because we also get articles from our API and they don't have an ID by default because we only use that ID for our local database. And because of that, I want to compare the URL here because we know that the URL is also unique to each article. And then we have that function, our contents the same, that just as the name says, compares two contents of our um, old item and our new item. So here we just compare if our old item is equal to our new item. The next step will be to create our async list differ. So the list differ is the tool that will take our two lists and compares them and calculates the differences. And as you can hear, it's async, so asynchronous, it will run in the background. So let's write val differ and set it to new async list differ. And that takes our adapter as the first parameter, which is just this. And then as a second parameter, our differ callback that we declared above. And now we can start to implement our recycler view functions by pressing control plus I and select all of those functions, implement them. You're, you probably know how to set up a recycler view if you're watching this series. First of all, in on create view holder, we want to return our article view holder 
And in here we want to use the layout inflator to inflate our layout. So layout inflator dot from, we can get the context from our parent and call dot inflate afterwards. The layout will be r dot layout dot um, article. Do we have to import r? Yeah, we have to import r here. That's the reason why I couldn't find it. So r dot layout item article preview. I called it. Then we pass our parent, and we don't want to attach this to the root layout. And then next in our get item count function. We of course need to return the amount of items we have in our recycler view. And because we don't have that list that we passed in our constructor, instead we use our list differ that manages our list, we need to get the item count from our list differ. So we just return differ.currentList.size. And finally, in onbind view holder, we want to set our views accordingly. First of all, I want to get the current article from our differ dot current list at the index of position. And then we can call our holder dot item view and call apply on that so we can immediately reference our views. So we can reference them directly basically. And first of all I want to load the image from our article into our image view using glide here. So glide dot width and here we pass just this as a view. Call dot load afterwards we want to load article.url to image and we want to load it into our IV article image. So that is our image view for each article item. And then we just need to set a bunch of text views. First of all, our TV source dot text, set that to article dot source dot name. Then we can set our TV title dot text to article dot title tv description dot text to article dot description and our tv published at dot text to article dot published at and what I also want to add is a possibility to add item click listeners to our single articles so to our single adapter items because later on we will be able to click on those so that our article fragment opens up with the web view that shows our article and having such a listener is just easier to access that on click um, event from the outside. So let's actually do that below here. That will be a private var on item click listener, which is of type. So which is a functional lambda function that takes an article as a parameter and returns nothing. So a unit it is, it is nullable and we set it to null by default. So we will pass the current article when we click on an item to that Lambda function. So we will be able to open the correct web view page. And to set that on click listener, I will add a function, um, function set on item click listener that takes a listener that also takes an article as a parameter and returns a unit. And in here we just want to set our on item click listener to our past listener. So that is just good coding style I think that we manage the, the item clicks outside of our news adapter. And also don't forget to call that function when we actually click on an item. Let's do that in this apply block of our holder dot item view. And Let's call set on click listener here so that set on click listener refers to our item view. So whenever we click on that item and in here we want to check if our on item click listener is not equal to null. So we go into that lab block and in case it is not, then we want to call that function with our current article. So maybe this is a little bit confusing that it just refers to our on item click listener lambda function and that lambda function takes an article as a parameter on which we click basically and when that on item click listener is not equal to null we just want to call that lambda function with the current article which the, this one here and yeah that is everything we needed to set up for our news adapter i hope this video helped you to understand all that diff util stuff if you still have questions don't mind asking them in the comments and 
Also, if there's anything I can improve on, please let me know that. That would be really helpful for me. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.